uh, in today's video for pre-market analysis on October the 16th, 2024, we are going to show you uh, a trade which will help us answer the question, how much money do you need to trade option? which I get a lot. So I'm just, I'm going to give you actually two examples that happened yesterday. Yesterday, the first one you are seeing here, it's on the screen here. If my screen can get stable, here we go. After earnings yesterday, uh, JNG uh, stock traded from uh, 159 or so to 156. Here is the trend of an option, the 167 and a half calls which never got in the money, by the way, if, if you really check the, the, the chart of the stock, it's when the, this option expiring on the 24th, meaning we are Wednesday today expiring uh, this coming, no, not on the 24th, actually it's expiring on Friday here, October 24 means the third week of October, because that's uh, the, the, the monthly expiration. So this, this option here, this contract expires on uh, this coming Friday, as it was trading yesterday, it went from a lowest point of one cents to eighty three cents. In a matter, we are looking at a chart here for this option. This is this view is from uh, Webull, a five minute chart. So each one of these candles you see here is five minutes interval. So the the one cents lowest price of the day, yeah, was the lowest price of the day, uh, went to eighty three cents. And if you count the candles, you will see that we have less than. Uh, 10 candles, actually, yeah, I don't know, 15 candles or so. So this happened in less than 90 minutes where we were able to get a profit of 8,000% in less than 90 minutes. One cent, yeah, that contract that goes from one cent. We have had example in the past, if you go to some of our old videos of Baba after earnings. Why do we, how do we know this? If you ask me, yeah, but Telex, how could I have done to, to, to figure out this uh, GNG stock? We have the, the, <laughs> the, the empirical data where we actually know stocks that are likely to do that. And we teach you that as part of our strategy, which is called the gangster trade. Yes, that's where they, they this come in. So they are not random. We know in advance because we have done the study uh, to know actually which one to target. So I was glad that we captured JNG example on here. But in case, in case you still uh, on the fence, let's go with the familiar stock for that. I'm, I, I didn't bring that here, but just for that, let me just go here and quickly bring. Uh, I'm going to bring uh, our friend QQQ. How did we trade QQQ yesterday? Here was QQQ yesterday. These are just, I just did the cream capture in the summary of my, of my trade. Here, so the QQQ 0DTE expiring on the 15, 490 puts, we're going for 5 cents, my friend. So $5. So here are three contracts. The cost here is 1608 because uh, each trade charges me 35 cents per contract. Yeah, I negotiated with them to, to trade this stuff. So the total three times five plus the 35 times three, a whooping investment of $16, which turned out to be, well, that's an opportunity to teach you what's going on here. So the next um, row here is showing that, hey, so to close, two puts QQQ 1015, this very one you see here acquired for five cents per contract at 71 cents per contract. Oh my God, what's going on here? So this is here, it's more than a 10 bagger <laughs> because 10 bagger would have been uh, 55 cents, right? So this just here. So, but what I want the, the, the tech the opportunity to do here is actually teach a little bit because this is a perfect illustration of what we call here a scale exit. So yeah, I didn't close all of these three contracts all at once. So here I closed two of them. And then later on, I closed the last runner at a whooping $1.09, thus making this last trade here over <laughs> a 2,000% <,000 ,000> win <laughs> back around this. Yes, yes, yes. So here we just showed you two examples of how much, trying to answer the question, not trying, actually prove giving you evidence of how much you need to trade options. So the first trade was one cent on JNG, which is part of a strategy we call the Gansa trade, which we can teach you. We will teach you here, not we can, we will teach you here at Successful Tradings. And then this trade of the QQQ that we are familiar with, everybody trade QQQ, it's like bread and butter, right? So this one in this case here, uh, we have like 
uh, how much this this one here from five cents to 71 cents is a 1200 <laughs> percent profit trade and this one is over 2000 percent trade on here all right so very good let me go back to our uh Talk of the day here. So yeah, these two examples, it answered those questions. And this is earning season, folks. So meaning that this is the perfect season for us with the strategy called the Gansa strategy because after earnings, we don't gamble before earnings. You know that. We don't do that here. So, but after earnings, we are in prime position to take advantage of the huge volatility that we saw. Uh, another trade that I could have brought here was... Um, uh, Goldman Sachs that we traded yesterday. Look at the chart of Goldman Sachs. You will see exactly what you are talking about. So that set us up. We are Wednesday. The new watch list will be coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow. And here, let's take a look at a preview. Where are the overall indexes going? I mean, you know that our focus is strictly really in terms of index that we trade. Uh, QQQ is by far the largest one. I mean, the DAO, I'm showing the DAO here just for sure, really, because it's part of the same screen. Uh, IWM, we like this one. And the setup here is really interesting to us. It's, it was on our watch list, if you look at our watch list last week, where we were targeting the 22 uh, calls. Uh, as one of the entry, well, my friend, they were already in the money from last Thursday release when, when this stock was trading at 215 or so. So, but movement calls more movement because from here, there are only two things that can happen. Will this finally break above that resistance, a three month resistance here of come back down? You'll find that it will be in our watch list going in next week. Our friend NVIDIA. What's NVIDIA doing? Everybody and the friends almost like, I mean, you saw QQQ over there with, I'm, I'm missing a red candle here. Sorry about that. So for Q, for NVIDIA, uh, it's kind of a triple top type of uh, setup, my friends, right? That's what's going on. So more to come into next week. Um, the next one that's definitely, definitely on our radar is Broadcom. Broadcom is a very interesting stock because its ATR is very interesting. And between Wednesday and Friday, there are opportunities to make money on there. I will be wise to bring to their attention that super microcomputer SMCI is prime to do something. There's a lot of consolidation that have been going on here for quite a while now, almost a month and a half. Plus, uh, after the, 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 the split, right? So this stock, I reckon that uh, we are bound to make money uh, by the by, by Friday on here. So one of the strategy on Supermicron, they're a little bit expensive, but I mean, from Wednesday to Friday, I don't mind taking a strangle on something like that. So that's uh, that, that that's what some of some, something that uh, you can look for. Now, this year, Apple is the best setup that I think that we have going into next week. A little bit of triple topping here, yeah? We traded at 233 yesterday. Actually, as a matter of fact, as uh, QQQ was struggling yesterday to stay green, Apple was the only green of the top eight that you know in, in QQQ. So, but here, where is it going to go? Again, a breakout is very possible for us. We will set this up in our watch list with two strike price, one for call and one for um, put. And as you know, or you do not know, we'll teach you how we trade our watch list. But this setup is what we call a high probability setup. Let's go more, one more, one more, one more, or, or actually a few more. I mean, this one is the same. Look at the pattern of this Chinese stock, JD, Baidu, PDD, and Baba for that matter. I have all of them four on here. Well, the going is a little bit tough for this uh, lately, right? So the downtrend have started here. Uh, and these one typically, I mean, when they want to reverse, they reverse in a hurry. So by the end of the month here, uh, all of these may come back to the normal baseline. Uh, what do we have? We traded successfully yesterday, JD. JD, JD was a good trade yesterday on this gap down on here, but we still have expiration for next week as well. So therefore they will be on our watch list. I mean, you, you can definitely try. I told you last in last video, I prefer JD and PDD, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with trading Baidu or, or Baba for that matter. Um, next, 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 what we look for next week? Uh, oh, the banks. Okay. Well, the banks pretty much all have the same setup, almost, almost to, to some extent. Uh, but JP Morgan, JP Morgan is in the perfect scenario again. This is the third time I'm seeing this. The markets, either two things are going to happen here in this uh, the first two weeks of earnings season. Either we are going to see major breakouts 
really where stocks are going higher and higher. Uh, the, in the case of uh, JP Morgan here, is it topping at 225? I'm not sure, but one thing for sure, it will be on our watch list. And I will definitely be looking at strike price on the downside of 215, uh, just, just, just to show on here conservatively. So, and the, those options, they tend to be cheaper than Goldman Sachs, hence I prefer them. So this is our watch list, a preview of our watch list. And uh, today we are just going to follow the existing watch list. There are plenty of opportunities. There were gains yesterday of 400% uh, uh, across the board on PDD, uh, JD, uh, NVIDIAs and, and the like. So we will be following that while awaiting our new watch list. Thank you. And uh, we wish to see you in the next episode of Option Trading for Beginners. Bye-bye.